Welcome to another episode of the We Have a Meeting podcast. So today we're joined by some incredible people from a company that's very close to home. So we've got an incredible entrepreneur who's extremely passionate about making workspace flexible and enjoyable for everybody. We've got Caleb Parker from Bold who believes in challenging the status quo and is a champion for entrepreneurial and innovative thinking. We're also joined by James, the incredible community manager from Bold, who's determined to grow the brand and deliver an exceptional experience. We're joined by two incredible people from one of the most forward-thinking workspaces, Bold. Welcome to the podcast, Caleb and James. How are you guys? Thanks for having us, guys. Nice. Yeah, it's brilliant. Thanks for inviting us. It's an opportunity. This opportunity is brilliant to be here. No worries. Well, well, thank you for joining us. Obviously, we are, uh, for anyone that's, that's listening and doesn't know, we are in, um, in the Manchester office. We're in a, a bold office. We've been here since last April and you guys have helped us with our growth and we love everything bold um, about that from, from the quirky coffee, coffee cups to um, all of the, the paintings on the wall. So th- <laughs> we'll start the same way that we always do. Caleb, we'll chuck it to you first. But in terms of you, in a nutshell, tell us about who you are and the problem that you solve. So as you said, um, uh, my name is Caleb Parker. Um, I've been an entrepreneur most of my career. Um, about a little over a decade ago, I know it's going to sound cheesy, but I sort of found my life's purpose and mission. Um, and that is, I, I strongly believe that the world today has been made uh, better from the past by entrepreneurs, someone who isn't afraid of, as you said a moment ago, stand up to challenge the status quo and say, wait, things can be better. So a little over a decade ago, I dedicated myself to championing people like that. Um, and I think people who are entrepreneurial minded, um, which means that they can work for a large corporate but still be entrepreneurial, or they can go out and crack off and venture their own um, business and go through all the pains of and suffering of that, as you guys have, have boldly done. Um, and so the bold um, brand itself came from that passion. And uh, one of the ways we manifest that is by being building ecosystems for entrepreneurs, such as the one you're in uh, with James at Manchester. Okay, and, and what, what happened for you to decide that actually, this is my life purpose, this is what I wanna pursue now? Like, was there a, a defining moment no, there wasn't a defining moment, I don't think, from for me waking up in the bathtub one day and saying, Eureka. Um, but um, it sort of found, my, found that I was always helping other entrepreneurs with questions, mentoring, uh, just taking some of the experience, some of the trials and tribulations that I've been through and helping them work their way through. And uh, that just sort of continued to grow. And it, I, one day... Um, I guess I didn't really wake up and say boom, but realize that this is this is what I'm doing. I'm already doing it. Let's formalize it. Okay, and and in terms of like the problem you solve, so I guess at some point I was one of your patients and I had the the problems that you solve. So what what are typically those problems that that you solve in, in that space? Well, I think as an entrepreneur, and you guys know this um, from from day one. Um, you have this, these ideas in your head that you can't stop thinking about, and how do you take those ideas and get them out into something that's tangible? Um, and uh, I, and then as an entrepreneur, going from that idea to growing your business, you need various levels of support and um, and, um, and and services, and the, and that varies for everyone in every type of business. Um, but what we spend a lot of time doing is thinking about those levels of service and support that an entrepreneur needs. And that might, that might be just bumping into each other and having a coffee and talking about recruitment strategy. Um, or it could be, you know, so much more raising capital. It could be, you know, so many different things that, that – so our goal is to bring an ecosystem together of all the – look, we're, I always say that we're the conductors of the orchestra. We don't play all the musical instruments. So in Manchester – Bold Bauhaus, there's a venture capital firm in the building. So to the extent we can connect some entrepreneurs with them, for one example, but we're all, we're about connecting and we're about creating community for people to tap into. I love that. And, and it's kind of like, it's, it's aligned with us in terms of like problem centric. It is big picture 
rather than just like oh we offer desks in an office but we'll we'll, we'll come on to that we a have bit those. later <laughs> yeah we you've ha- got we those as do, well but i think yeah. i think often people are looking at at, at us at 10,000 feet and saying you guys are a co-working space but when you zoom in we're so much more yeah no totally and and james in terms of yourself I know you very well. I see you on a daily basis. If you listen into this podcast, you won't be able to see the incredible beard that he's got. Um, but if you're watching it on YouTube, you will be able to. So who are you and what is the problem that you solve? So I am the community and hospitality manager for Bold. Um, I joined the project in its, as we were putting in house together. The, my role was quite undefined at the time, and I've worked over the last sort of 12 months or so to help really nail down what is a community and hospitality manager for Bold. Um, problems that I solve vary. It's my job to be within the community, to be in and around everyone that's coming and going and help add in value to that community. Um, like Cable was saying, we are uh, an ecosystem. It is a living, breathing thing. You need someone there constantly being in, a, in and amongst it, adding value and helping people to solve the problems that they have. There's no such thing as a catch-all. There's no such thing as, as one one answer for every problem. Um, so I help facilitate and recommend and push people in the right direction, whoever that may be. Mm. And, and you've been incredibly supportive of us and, and our growth in the in the, um, the building. Um, so what was it about Bold? Obviously, you, you get to the point where you're interviewing for, for different jobs and you're looking for something. What was it about Bold that stood out to you? So I was in my pitch, so to speak, I always talk about Bold as a an experience, a concept, or... Our core business is is office space, it is desk, it is chairs. Um, but at the end of the day, that, that pays our bills, that, that keeps the lights on. Uh, our real business, as Caleb said, if you do zoom into the picture, it's all about that ecosystem. It's all about that community. It's all about that drive, that growth, that entrepreneurial spirit. You could be a one person or a 200 person, you know, business, but still be bold. I found myself aligning a lot within the core values of of the company. I could see myself being at bold and wearing the, the, you know, the B every brand of, of, of clothing I have daily. Um, but it's, but it's easy to talk about because everything that bold stands for aligns with who I am and what I like to do. So there's no spiel. There's no, there's no lies. There's no exaggeration. There's, this is what we are. This is what we do. I'm not here to trick you into taking an office space with us. You know, I think you're bold, we're bold too. Let's, let's work together. I love that. Great answer. So that sounds like you're, the James that we see is the James that you probably are at home and with your mates. There's not really any difference. Yeah, it's real. It's there's no there's there. no fake. I'm not I'm not here to, to cram you into a, a three-year contract and pay me X amount a month. I don't work on commission. I never work in commission. What I, when I want you to come and work with us, it's, it's true. Um, I mean, I met, we have a meeting, what, tw- almost 12 months ago now. We went on the roof and you had a selfie and you had three people. Um, and now you've upgraded from your two workstation to a four workstation, the four workstation, you know, and a 12. And then we're talking about what what's next. And that's great. And that's exactly what we love. And that's exactly what we want to see. We want to grow with you. And if it ever got to a stage where we could no longer grow with you and you had to leave us, Fantastic. Great. We've done Wish our job. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. You know, you know, go out in the world and do do bold things. And you like bold the... is all up. I was gonna say you like the personal trainers, you're getting us the abs and then we Absolutely. Can, we can, yeah, yeah. You, know. you know, we don't we don't want to keep you fat, we don't want to keep you in our gym. <laughs> we want you to go out, you know, do what you need to do. So that's the kind of the, the, the positive end, but let's let's kind of flip the script on that a little bit you'll probably see a lot of people that come in that you work with maybe some that you don't that have that entrepreneurial spirit or that entrepreneurial vision and for whatever reason it just doesn't work out they don't get it going 
So from your experience in what you've seen in terms of people who've come through the door, people who've had to leave, people who've maybe had to downgrade, what are those common mistakes? Let's start off with you, Caleb. What are those common mistakes that people make in those early stages that often steer a business in the wrong direction and they, they fail before they even get started? I, I think, um, and, and I've done it, um, we, we tend as entrepreneurs to have this big vision of how we see the world and um, and, 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 it, and it's it's big, because and, and that was what gets us excited, which which is great. But then we try to do so many things at once. We try to make it all happen on day one, and really you need to sort of work backwards and break it down into small parts, and then focus at the beginning. Focus, focus, focus. And there's not enough focus going on um, in, in the in, in people that that don't make it to the end. It, but that's okay. I think. Um, as much as we want to try to prevent failures and, and make help people be successful, we also have to accept that failure is part of the process, and and go after and don't be afraid to to try new things, um, and and fail because that's just part of the process. That's a great answer. I, th- I think the the thing is with as you'll know that entrepreneurial side tends to be quite open to risk, so you find that people have a quite an unusual appetite for risking things. Um, are there any, have you got kind of a sixth sense now for, you know, you'll meet a business that's potentially coming in to the, to, to, to bold and you'll, you'll know this guy's got it or this, this person's doesn't, they're not thinking of it in the right way. Are those the kind of telltale signs? I think, and James, you might want to pipe in here as well, but I think, um, it, it's, it's, the, it's the hunger underneath um and, and and how they explain it how much thought they've put into the idea and they've gone deep and they can answer all the questions and the questions that they can't answer they sit there and they don't try to give you a, a, an answer on the fly they sit there and reflect and say you know what i i, I don't know that it's something i need to research and um, those are the kinds of things that um an entrepreneur has about them that you can sort of say well they're probably gonna do well even if they fail along the way they're probably gonna do well what about you james you, you see along the way there's people who have great ideas or a good idea and then there's people who have businesses you know just because you have a great idea or just because you have some way of making money doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a great business or a successful business so i found people who love what they do number one to have the drive and free are aware of where their weaknesses are tend to do really well if you are a fantastic marketing company but you don't have a strong sales or operations knowledge or someone to rely on then along the way you're going to stumble if you recognize is where your weaknesses are early on and fortify that in order to push forwards you tend to do really well Mm, i I think it's one, one of the key things like when we meet other entrepreneurs and business owners and things like that it's that self-awareness like some people run into it like a like a puppy dog and they're, they're just like i'm gonna do this this and this and like you said it's like you can have a great idea but where's the action and where's the discipline and and like you said caleb not actually getting carried away and it's like okay this is the big picture but what do i need to do in year one what do i need to do in year two to actually get there absolutely and it, it is that execution i think that's if i had to put a key word out of what James just said, it's the execution bit. Um, often we spend time thinking about the idea, which is great. You need to have a phase for that, but then you, at some point you've got to, you know, put your jump into the water. <laughs> you can't, you can't even just dip your toe. You just got to jump in. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if you're if you're going out there and, and as James said, fortifying your weaknesses by by bringing in, surrounding yourself with smarter people than you in those areas, then that's how you do it. Yeah, me and Zach were talking about this the other, the other day, and I think so many people strategize, which is which is right. You've got to, but how many people are spending all their time just with their head stuck in an Excel spreadsheet? Uh, around about we were saying like twenty, thirty percent. Once you've got a bit, at some point, especially for us, at some point you've just got to pick up the phone. Like, yep. oh, you can do all this research, but without that action behind it, it's kind of pointless. So, um, and and, so, yeah. and sorry, um, I'm just no, going to say on. on that the. I think um, often we get these grand ideas, and the, the, the key test as an entrepreneur is, is will somebody pay you for that? 
Um, yeah. You know that that's how you, you got to jump in the water and see if people will pay. And if you have somebody, if you have people that will pay, then you've got a you've got a business. Because what is business? You make money, right? We're yeah. Not, we're not a charity. We're not a nonprofit. Yeah, exactly. So many people are like, well, you've just got to do what you love. Yeah, but at some point there has to be, if you're doing a business, then at some point there's got to be some commercial savviness about it. Um, so the, the approach of Bold is very aligned with ours. So it's very problem centric. So I saw one of your posts on LinkedIn, Caleb. So I, I, I cited a little bit here. So why do we buy a hammer? Not because we want a hammer, but because we want art on the wall like your, uh, your fabulous painting there. But the same applies when, when choosing an office. So we need a desk, but, but with Bold, it's a little bit more than that. So how do you actually, when these people come in to see you, how do you portray that and how do you help them and, and find out what they're looking for and, and take them to that next level? I'm going to defer to James on this because he's the expert. I'm not going to name any names, but there is an office company uh, that when you go and tour and view i don't know if you have or not but you go on tour and view with them uh and they bring you into a room a meeting room and they in essence lock the door and you sit there for 45 minutes this presentation this is how good we are we want you to sign in here's your contract here sign it right now let's lock you in right now and it's a very hard sell and whether or not you sign or don't sign you walk away you get barrage with, with text emails and phone calls over the next three weeks or so. Recently, we were all sent on a uh, regional sales meeting uh, training day, and we went through viewing training. And I sat there and I compared Bold's viewing, what we do, compared to that of one of our other brands. Um, it's very, very, very different. I or we at Bold like to walk through our site and we have a conversation with you. Who are you? What do you do? What do you want to do? And how can we fit into that? I'm not here to give you a hard sell. I'm not here to force our ideologies on you as a company. I'm not here to say, this is how we work, so that means this is how you work. I want to know how you work, the style that you work, where you want to go, and how can we support you do that? I'm not going to sit there and talk to you about, oh, look at our beautiful meeting room suites, when in reality you don't really, you never want to meet in your entire life. But alternatively, I want to be able to share our shared values, have you join our ecosystem. I, yeah, and, and I know that you've, you've spent a lot of, of time around the team, but that sounds pretty much word for word, like our sales process and our methodology. And it, it's a case of like, we, we, we need to really understand you. It's, it's not just going to be like a, a one size fits all. So, so have you been in situations where actually it's not been the right fit for where they need to be? And, and how have you handled those conversations? Um, if our director of sales is listening, I always take the sale. Absolutely, 100% <laughs> of the time. Um, but it's not for everyone. And that's fine. That, that's okay. If you don't match up so what we have or what how we work, that's absolutely fine. You know, I again I'm not gonna sell you on false promises or sell you on the absolute dream when reality it's not there. I sell realistic expectations. I tell you about who we are and what we do, how we can work with you, and if that aligns what you're after, I wanna work with you. But again, I'm not gonna force a contract in front of your nose, promise you I'm gonna grow your business by tenfold by you joining involved when it's not gonna happen. It's, it's mm. you know in reality i still recommend we have other portfolios we have other brands within our, our wide portfolio if it's so much bold you can go to uh, one of one of the other branded names and then we go on and go forth with that you know good luck that's all we're everything and then hopefully see you if anything changes yeah and just because obviously it's a, it's a no now it doesn't mean that, that it's a no forever so they'll remember that experience and everything that's that's happened and yeah, I, th I think it's it's it's. You, I think you're one hundred percent right, Caleb. Any anything that you wanted to add in on that? I think shared values is is the phrase that I, I would repeat that James said. It's um, it. I think when when we put the bold brand together, we built the entire experience around what entrepreneurs need to grow their business, um, and so we're very confident in in that we're delivering 
a certain experience for a certain type of customer. And so if a customer that doesn't fit that profile comes in um, and, and they're not comfortable with the experience, they want to ask us to compromise our values, um, we can't because it's, it's not authentic for us. And um, so we're, we're comfortable, as James said, uh, um, saying we're not the right fit. Um, but um, I think at the end of the day, people appreciate that. And at the end of the day, people want to go where they feel taken care of and where they feel like they belong. And, you know, if, if they're someone with a, a mindset like you guys who are trying to change the world, then they're probably going to feel like they belong. And that's okay. So I, I don't think we could have this conversation without talking about probably what you have to deal with every day, the remote working culture that seems to have kicked off massively since COVID. I know, Caleb, you talk about this a lot on LinkedIn as well. So if I'm a leader of a business and I think, you know what, we work remotely in COVID, what's the point in going back to the office now and, and building that community again? Why am I wrong? I think, um, first of all, I'll, I'll say James is in an office today and I'm working remotely. Unbelievable. Um, and I think that this is the world we live in. It's the world I've lived in for over a decade. And not that I work remotely every day um, because I've seen you guys in the office. Um, but I think the reality is, is we don't need an office to get our work done if our work is more knowledge based. A taxi driver has to be in their mobile office. Um, but as long as we have good internet connection, we don't need an office to get our work done. First of all, we have to acknowledge that. So it's a right, it's a good question for any leader to ask is why do I need an office? Because when you dig deep into that question, it's going to be different for everybody, but the answer is going to show you how you should take an office and add it to your platform of work as a tool. And so some people want to use that office to come together and meet with clients and have a place that they can show that this is our identity. Some people want to attract talent by saying these are the values that we aspire to and that we align with and we want you to be part of this ecosystem. And so it's, it's a really good, important question for any leader to ask. And the answer is, if you just need a desk to do work, um, you don't need that. Okay. Now, now I'll, I'll give one caveat to that because that's, that's a very general statement. There are people who do need a desk just to work because they, at, at home they have lots of flatmates or they have crying children or X, Y, Z, probably a thousand reasons why they should – just need a desk to work from. So then the answer to that is finding a place where they feel like they belong. And then what if I'm hiring people and I'm bringing people in and they've got this, this, we, we know how this goes, but if you were to hire someone new into a business and you've got an office like Bowl to bring someone into, or I can just have you working remotely, see you once a quarter, what are some considerations that I need to be thinking of there? I think I think as a leader of a business, we need to be thinking about um, the culture that we want to the, the the culture that we want to create and and bring into the world. What values do we do we as, uh, align with, and what is our purpose as a business? Put that front and center in our recruitment, and attract people who are aligned with that thinking. Then. At whatever frequency makes sense for that culture and for the people that you that you bring into the business, and that's a conversation with those people, um, and I think that that's going to be the lead you to determine on how you need to devise your office. Um, but the other thing I'll say is that um, if you look at the stats on volunteering right now in, in startups, it shows that people want to make an impact on the world. And it, or to me, it shows that people want to make an impact on the world. They're willing to work after hours. They're willing to work on the weekends to support a cause that they uh, align with. And, and if that's the case, then people are adults. So we should be treating people like adults. And I, I know you guys would want to hire people that you know are professional or ambitious. So um, can we trust them to get their shit done and choose how they do that? And are we taking care of them 
or making them feel taken care of? And are we creating an environment when they do come together that they want to be in? And that's the key question because if they want to be there, we don't have to mandate that they are. And, and James, you must have had some anecdotal evidence of this, like you've shown people around they've taken an office, but before they were working remotely because of COVID or just the way yeah. the business was set up before. What have you found on this topic? So, again, one of the first questions I like to ask people is when they come in, I have, I have my notes that are set up by the reservations team is, for example, if they're there to see a six-person office, my first question is always, do you need a six-person office or do you have six people who are going to be working with you? Because then that would lead into, again, how are you working as a company? You no longer need 20-person offices for 20 people. You need a 10-person 10 10 office for 20 people because you have off the flexi work. <clears throat> and in terms of if you need an office or don't, why can't you have something in the middle? Why can't you have hot desk in three day a week, drop in, drop out? Why can't you offer co-working, uh, hot desk in or even offices as part of your perks as a company? If you grew your business throughout Manchester, one of the benefits you can offer people is you work your own way. Come to Bold whenever you feel like working there or every Tuesday and Thursday we're going to have a sales meeting at Bold. It's that base, it's there somewhere to refer back to. Why do you need an office? Can be answered the same question is why do you need a restaurant? Why do you need a bar when you can cook at home and you can drink at home? You go to bars and restaurants for the experience. You go for the camaraderie. You go for the atmosphere, meeting new people and bouncing ideas around. You come to offices to collaborate, you come to offices to work with each other and to get that culture that you that company puts out there. Yeah. Mm, I, 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 sorry, go on. No, no, no. I could see you were, you were eager. Brilliant analogy, Kate, Caleb. No, this is. I think it's it's fantastic. I love the the word experience in that, and th this is the thing. And and from our end, we create an experience that that we knew as entrepreneurs work for us. Um, but we also have to say, okay, well, what what do our customers need, and what do they want? And that experience evolves over time. Uh, and I I would say the same thing applies to companies. As companies hire more people and grow and grow and grow by engaging our employees and understanding what they need and what they want. Certainly, it still needs to align and go in the same direction as the purpose of the company, um, but the same principle applies, in my opinion. And I'll, I'll just add one thing: is that the restaurant analogy. Uh, we don't go. Most people, we don't go to restaurants every night, but they're mm. there for us to tap into when we need that experience. I mean, yeah. I would if I could. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> also, I wanted to say, Jack. Jack, in your office door, it's a wireless lock. Mm -hmm. On that wireless lock, anyone in your team can access that. You don't need a physical key in your hands to physically give that to a member of your team. You don't need to be there to hand over the keys or we don't have to have a lockbox or anything because everyone works slightly different. You can access your office 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can come on Christmas Day, whenever, national holiday, middle of the night, should you wish, and so can any members of your team. Everyone works a slightly different way. And that access and that availability is there for them. We wanted to do this because we accept that Monday to Friday, nine to five working isn't for everyone. You can do your own thing whenever you need to do it. Exactly. And it, and it goes back to an earlier point of like treating people like adults with the respect that you want to. And as much as I, I might have upset LinkedIn by suggesting you should cold call on Christmas Day, I can hands in the air, I wasn't cold calling on Christmas Day, but it's that flexibility and, and, and I can only go off, I've, I've always been, um, in, in previous roles, I've always been office based, this is it, this is what you've got to do. Obviously COVID happened and then after that, we have a meeting was born. So I've only had two experiences of co-working, but it's so, it's so interesting to compare of how right you can get it with you guys and how wrong you can get it, which I, I won't name the, the competitor, but but really, and this is this is down to experience. And I know that when I when I came and I, I first met with you and and Alex, the sales manager, it was it was a case of like these are some of the problems that I face, and and the same way that we do in a therapeutic sales call, they was like, well, okay, 
this is like, like I said, like maybe forgetting my key card and getting shouted at by the office manager somewhere else. Those things happened. But coming here and be like, well, it, it's just on your phone. You can come in whenever you want. There's no no one watching over you. There's no no rules on that. And I, I think these are things that we bring problems to you that we can foresee, and you can say, okay, well, this this this. That's how we'd solve it. Does it does it seem like a fit? Which is is kind of our approach to sales anyway. I think uh, in, as entrepreneurs, we have to uh, we, we have to always be asking questions, and um, I think we have to we have to have our, our, our strong opinions, but loosely held, and, and challenge those those thoughts. And, and when when you guys come to us and say, "Have you guys thought about this? We'd like to do this," we can't say no. That's not our policy. We have to actually say, "Okay, well, let's think about it and talk about it and see how we can say yes." Mm, absolutely. So. Sticking on the theme, then this this moves on quite nicely. We are a, we are a sales podcast. So a lot of people listening are working in sales. They're leaders. They're SDRs. All of these different kind of things. So when it comes to sales, we like to give actionable takeaways. So you guys are and, and both of you are all the time are selling the idea, the service, whatever it is. You're always selling. So what do you think is important with sales and selling? What actionable takeaways can you give away to our listeners? I guess um, I, I'll I'll say this, and this is probably James's is, is domain more than mine, but I think sales usually implies that someone, not always clearly, because you guys are cold calling, but sales often implies that someone has a need and they're contacting you, um, which means that. So, the marketing has done a good job. Now, so when they come in, they they have some sort of warm understanding of, of of what they need and how you might be able to stack up. So for us, it's about you know looking at asking questions, asking lots of questions to understand um, what their values are, what what they are trying to achieve. If we go back to the hammer and, and uh, nail analogy you referenced earlier on my LinkedIn, um, when they come in asking for um, are pricing on office space. Well, they don't want an office. They, they want to be successful as a business. They want to grow their company. So we need to understand their company, their growth plan, um, what they're trying to achieve before we can actually go back to what James says and say, well, do you need an office? Do you need memberships? Do you need access 24-7? What, what, what is it that you actually need to be able to grow your business? Um, I was actually talking last night at an event in London to, to a guy, and he was saying that you know they're growing, um, and uh, they they need an office, and um, he said they've got ten people. Their sales organization are going to grow, and I was like, what is it about having an office that you that you, that you need? And he says, well, we we need to be able to create our own culture within this like four walls, but we want to be in a sort of a co-working environment. So when half the people aren't in all the time, we don't feel lonely. We can go out and see other people. And I was like, well, what is it about the four walls that you need? Can you still have that same thing in an open environment? And uh, he said, I had thought of it that way. And um, so it's not about necessarily prescribing a solution all the time. It's about asking questions and letting people reflect. Yeah, the, the, the questions are so much more important than the answers you give. I think we had a stoic quote very similar to that dribbled on our um, wall at some point. James, uh, any actual takeaways for you when it comes to selling and, and actually like the process behind it? Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I mentioned it <clears throat> previously. Um, I, mattress companies don't sell mattresses. You sell a good night's sleep. You, you sell the experience, not the product. If you, if you come to me and you, you're after, you know, a, a desk and somewhere to work at, you know, functional space and at a cheap price all doesn't for you yeah, I'm not going to pretend it's not I'm not, again I'm not going to force you into it you're coming to board for the experience and it's my job to, to sell you that experience yeah mm. and what what do you think when it comes to questioning for you to really understand like what what line of questioning do you think I, I think we've touched on it a little bit but what are what are some of the big things that you want to know we're, we're not there to interrogate people we're not there with a clipboard and a pen and go, tick, ask how long your contract length is going to be, tick, what's your budget, tick, you know, what do you do for a living? You, you have a conversation with them. You need to, to fact find. You can't problem solve unless you fact find. Um, 
you know, I want to know about you, who you do and what you do and how you do things. And that's how I personally sell. If you, if you go somewhere else that they may be slightly different or it may be more of a barrage of questions. Um, but get to know the person as a person and get to know how you can solve problems that they have. When, when I was introduced to James for the first time, a uh, year before last, um, as a potential candidate for community manager, community and hospitality manager. Um, it, it, first off, I saw his beard and thought, okay, he's bold already. Great. But when talking to James and hearing his personality and, his under, and, 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 and how he thought and what he you – know, I asked him one question. If you go wave a magic wand, how would you change the world? And you know, his, his reflection and answer to that, I just thought he's the right fit. But here's why. Um, the team, the on-site team, uh, for us, uh, will become our customers' best friend, or should become our customers' best friend. Now I'm going to put quotations around "best" because we know they're not going to be the best friend, but it's the it's the sentiment around that. Um, we talk about Jack and I are best friends. I mean, you know, <laughs> I think I we think Jack it. and Zach, you know, might I don't know, but uh... <laughs> sorry, Zach, it's <laughs> over. But the point is, is that um, it, it's. It's, it's not – you know you do have to ask these questions so you can understand what people need and what their desires are so you can present the benefits of what we're providing. But it's not about a checklist as James said. James is, is having conversations and in, in, in getting to know people and becoming friends with them. And then on the back of that, maybe we do some business too. It sounds a bit like you, you see it in the same way that we do. That it's almost like a therapy session. So I'm just going to help you get somewhere. Whether it's a yes or a no doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to help you get there. A hundred percent. And sometimes that somewhere is not with us and that's okay too. Mm. Yeah. So let, another big question is, and this is, I mean, this could go down all different ways. Let, let's start with you, Caleb. So, so, so Bold's got a really recognizable brand and brand is probably something that's misunderstood or probably overlooked by a lot of the businesses that you work with or, or could potentially work with in the future. So if I'm, an aspiring entrepreneur, what are the things I need to consider about brand? What makes a good brand? And, and what, were you, what was your own journey like with, with building a brand? I think, I think brand is an, an idea. It's an idea around uh, what we touched on earlier, shared values, um, and, and, and the purpose and the impact you want to make in the world. Um, and you can you, you can come up with any name. You can get clever and say, oh, it's, some, it, it's a Latin word that means this or whatever. But it really doesn't matter technically th what you call it. It's about what's, what it is w you know, and, and what the idea is does it, does it stand for. Um, because, I mean, nobody knew what Google you – know, the name Google before Google came around. Um, and they went around and organized the entire web, right? Um, but I think having – for us, when we were sitting there one day do, going through our branding exercises before we had an, the, the bold name brand, uh, we were talking about working with people who want to change the world, want to leave their you know, positive impact on the world, create legacy, um, people who aren't afraid to stand up and challenge the status quo. And we had a list of a bunch of different words that you know, could sort of be applied to that idea. Uh, and, then, and I kept calling these people bold people, and one day um, in that session, our designer said, why don't you call it bold? And so that's how we got to the bold brand, but we, we didn't just say, oh, we want to we we create a brand called bold, and let's think about all this other stuff around it. We had to think about the ideas first, and that's, that's important to me. Um, I think um, the, the, the logos, the... The color palette, the tone of voice, all that stuff um, comes later, and and th those just reinforce the values that you stand for. That's amazing. I didn't. Yeah, it makes perfect sense when you say it like that. Like how how bold came about. What? Why was it so important to work with those types of people? It was. It was going back to my my life's mission. Um, I, I've I've been an entrepreneur when when I. Around the time I was 19, I got introduced uh, to entrepreneurship by someone um, that uh, I worked with closely. I started reading some books and sort of caught the bug, and um, and then um, had a couple businesses. And then all of a sudden, you know, as I said earlier, I decided I wanted to work and support 
champion more entrepreneurs. And I think if you think about um, teachers, right? Teachers are probably some of the most underpaid and underrated people in the world. A good teacher, because a good every single person, most okay, I'm gonna say every single person. Most people have gone through school, <clears throat> and Every single, single successful person has probably gone through some, some school, and I bet you they can all point back to some teacher that inspired them. And so a teacher's legacy, we don't know. It's amazing, though, a good teacher. And I think if we can champion other entrepreneurs if, and we can help other entrepreneurs find their path to success and making positive impact on the world, well, then our legacy, our impact has been compounded and amplified. Um, so maybe we're being a little bit selfish in that way, but – um, you know that that's that's why I want to work with bold people. Uh, you, people like you guys who are, you know, brilliant and and growing other people's businesses for them. And for you, James, in terms of the the, the businesses that you've seen that have come in and built brands effectively, what are the things that make them effective? Branding isn't about going on Canva and picking some. A pretty logo and some, you know, colours, and you put it on your email footer, and you set up a little nice little Instagram page, and, and then off you go. Branding your company is about setting values, ethos, mindset, and then turning those into actionable points, which is then carried on throughout the company, no matter what the size but also educated and onboarded to anyone who is joining the team. It's pointless having a brand. It's pointless having an ethos. If down the sales line or down the, you know, the operations line that someone doesn't action it, it's pointless. So it's all about actual points and continuously feeding back into that core ethos, that core brand, that core mindset as you grow and as you move forwards. It, it creates trust with, with people, right? You're, if if um if everybody's rallying around a certain set of values, um and no, as James said, no matter how big you grow, it's your compass, and um you 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 continue to rally and surround yourself around, around those core values, and then it lets your customers know that you know whether you have one location or a thousand locations, they know what to expect. Yeah, there's something about bold as well the people that we talk to and you know we've gone up to London before and worked for a day there you all have that shared kind of value system and all talk the same about the different businesses that are involved so you could talk to anyone and you can hear it here between the two of you in spite of your different accents you can hear that you're <laughs> saying a, a very My similar accent. message different so, accents and beard links <laughs> yeah. So I suppose that there must be a connection between getting the brand right and then getting the recruitment right. The recruitment must come naturally if you've got the brand right. The people make the brand. Yeah. You have to find the right people for the right brand. Again, they have to believe in what you're doing to make it real. There's an old trope within hospitality is something called transactional customer service or transactional hospitality it's when you go to normally these very large chain multi-conglomerate companies you go in one morning and you go oh hi guys how are you good morning nice to see you again grab a seat we'll be right with you and you think oh that's fantastic that's great and then two minutes later you hear oh hi guys good morning how are you come in grab a seat and it's the same thing and you can hear it a hundred times again and again and again and if you look at it and a pinpoint, it sounds authentic, but in reality, it's the same thing over and over again. So it's not real, it's fake. It's it's not a real thing. So they, that person doesn't believe in it, therefore their branding in a way isn't real. So with Bold, it's hyper important to have the right people in the right place for the job because they believe in what we do to make the experience authentic, to make the value stick, to make us want our businesses and our partners and our ecosystem grow and get further and get bigger it's because it's real and that's what that's what it means to be bold it's authenticity and i yes go on caleb yeah absolutely and i think we can train people on technology we can train people on standard operating procedures but you can't train personality that is the authenticity that we need when people join the team Mm. No, 
Totally. Um, and I would say, like, with with brand... Why not so used to that? We'll just pull, we'll just hold one second and then I can edit it all out. <laughs> you don't want that in the podcast. We're, get, we're cutting this part out, right? So, um, yeah, we'll cut this bit. We'll cut this bit. <laughs> People don't need to know about Bold's dishwasher. <laughs> right, let, I'll just jump back in. Um, so James, you, you, was, you were saying it there and I, I think kind of a big part of that is like, if you get the values right, then that leads into the brand. And then it just just develops with the culture and, and things like that, and everything grows if, if the core the core root of it's there. Yes. So if you're if you're on a sales campaign and you're trying to get people to sign up to a very ethical, very nice company, and then you're ringing people up and you're telling them the exact opposite, it's not real. You know, it's not, that's not the brand, that's not authentic. You're going against exactly what the brand is and what the ethos is, therefore the brand and, um, and the values don't match up. So it's the same with any other business. If you, if you call yourself a green company and you really care about your staff's mental well-being and, and the team, but then expect them to work six days a week, 18 hour days, it's not real branding, therefore it's not authentic, therefore it doesn't work. It's just words. Yeah. It's just you pretty fun on Canva and then that's where it sort of stops. No, to- totally. I feel like we could we could talk about brand and, and all of these things all day. Um, it, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you guys on. I'm going to do a quick fire um, at the end. We like to end on a little bit of fluffiness. So going back to when you were starting your careers or the one piece of advice you would give to entrepreneurs getting started in the industry now? I'd say say yes to opportunity. Often we see advice about saying no to things and clearing your plate and this and that, and there's a lot of truth to that. But the more we say yes, the more opportunities we we pursue, the more doors that open. James? Uh, I'd say stay humble and always keep learning. Great advice. Well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I think it's been a very... um, it's been an incredible chat and there's lots of actionable takeaways from this. Um, if anybody wants to check out Bold or find you guys, where's the best place to go? Uh, go ahead, James. Sorry. I was going to say, yeah, you can via our website, uh, workbold.co.uk. You can find us on socials, workbold. Um, feel free to drop me an email. It's james at workbold.co.uk. Um, we'd love to have a chat with anyone and anyone want to talk about co-working office space or even anything that we talked about today super brilliant thanks gents thanks guys really appreciate the opportunity brilliant have a great day guys thank you